Hello. In 1906, British scientist Sir Francis Galton goes to a country fair, and one event held there was a competition where people would guess the weight of an ox after it's been slaughtered and dressed. The closest guesses would win prizes. The people guessing at the fair included farmers and butchers who had knowledge of this sort of thing, but also a lot of people who didn't really know anything about oxen or butchering. So the event happens and the people who have the closest guesses win their prizes. After the event ends though, Galton collects all the data and starts checking it out. He averaged the 787 crowd guesses and found that the crowd's average guess for the ox's weight was 1,197 pounds. The ox's actual weight was 1,198 pounds. This story is from a book called The Wisdom of Crowds by James Sarawicki, and its main point is that under the right conditions, averaged group guesses can be incredibly accurate, even more so than the guesses of highly intelligent individuals or experts in a certain field. Inspired by this book, I wanted to survey my viewers and attempt to replicate this wisdom of crowds effect. The three questions I asked were, how many prime numbers are there between one and a thousand? What is the population of South Africa? And how many beans are in this can? Now, I asked people to not Google the answer to these questions, even though some did, uh, but at the very least, you couldn't have Googled the answer to the last question about the beans. I had to actually hand count every single one of those, um, and I say that laughing, but it really wasn't that exciting. Without further ado, let's check out the data. How accurate was the averaged group guesses for each of those three questions compared to all of the individuals who guessed? All right, so here is the data. There were about 368 total responses, so thank you to everyone who did respond. Now, I initially recorded a version of myself explaining this in a lot of detail, but it wound up being like more than 30 minutes long, so I'm redoing it right now, and this is going to be just a very quick summary of all the data. If you want to see a longer, more detailed version of this data analysis, you can find it in the description or in the cards. Um, that longer, more detailed version covers everything from the math I used to specific patterns I found among unique submissions. Back to this data though, let's check out the answers for the three questions. For the first one, how many prime numbers are between zero and a thousand? The answer was 168. For what is the population of South Africa? The answer was 57.4 million. Um, that might not be the population now, but it was in January or February of 2018 when I initially asked everyone this question. And for how many individual black beans are in that can? The answer that I hand counted was 459. Now let's take a look at the group averages and see how close their responses were to these answers right here. I did remove some answers from this calculation because I felt like some of the users were cheating or just messing around and submitting total nonsense. But again, if you want to learn more about this data analysis, just click on that other video I talked about once you finished watching this. All right, so the group's average answer for how many prime numbers between zero and 1,000 was about 148. For the population of South Africa, it was around 65.4 million, and for how many individual black beans, it was about 1,300. Now, it's tough to tell just by looking at these how close these are to the actual correct answer, so what I did was I calculated what percentage of individual guesses the group average outperformed, and below we can see that the average for the prime numbers outperformed exactly 85% of individual guesses, and the average for the population of South Africa outperformed about 87.5% of all the individual guesses. That, to me, is pretty crazy. It means if you had just submitted the answer for those two questions, and someone said, would you rather bet on the answer you just submitted or the group's average answer, you should absolutely pick the group's average answer. And so when I was looking at these answers, because I calculated them in this order, I was feeling really great. I was thinking, wow, this is so cool that the wisdom of crowds effect is actually a real thing, and it's actually happening. But then I looked at the individual black beans question, and I calculated that the group's average guess was only better than less than 10% of the individual guesses. This was not a calculation error, this was the actual number. And I started to go back through the data and really look into why that happened. The other two were very accurate. So why was this one so far off? As I started to comb through the individual responses to this black bean question, I noticed that there were some very extreme outliers. Remember, there were only 459 beans in the can, but some guesses were way, way above that. Here we can see a guess of 18,000 beans in the can. Here we can see a guess of 50,000 beans in the can. And here is a guess that is so insanely high, 193,000. I 
wondered genuinely if when this person was responding, it was a misinput. So because these answers were so extreme, I thought to myself, maybe if I ran an algorithm that identified the outliers in this bean question data set, then the amount of individuals it would outperform would be more close to the prime numbers and the population of South Africa, instead of incredibly low. So I did just that. I identified outliers and removed them, which you can see in cyan here. And once I removed all the outliers, I calculated the average for the individual black beans question again. My response this time, the average without outliers, went from 1,333 to 418. And when I calculated what percentage of individual guesses that group average without outliers outperformed, it was over 95%. So once we removed the extreme outliers for the black beans question, the group's average guess then outperformed more than 95% of the individual's guess. Now I ran the outlier identification and re-averaging with the other two questions as well, and you may notice that with their outliers removed, the prime number and South Africa questions, the group average was actually a little worse. It didn't outperform as many of the individual guesses as it did before. I talk about why I think this happened in my other video as well. But for right now, the summary of my little informal experiment was the group averaged guesses for the first two questions were better than 85 to 87% of all the individual guesses. And then when we removed the outliers from the individual black beans question, that group average was greater than 95% of the individual responses. So what we saw was y'all were actually pretty accurate. But the question now we're led to is, why does this happen? How does a group's averaged guess sometimes produce these highly accurate answers? And my response to that is, I don't really know. It's actually not discussed in the book much, but Wikipedia's article in the book mentions that it may function similarly to statistical sampling. Here's what that means. Let's say you're trying to figure out how many people in America are left-handed. You ask 10 Americans and learn that three are. Does that mean that 30% of all Americans are left-handed? Well, not necessarily, because the sample size of 10 people is just too small to draw any accurate conclusions from. We need a bigger sample size, like 100 or 500 or 1,000 people, to make more consistently accurate conclusions about the percentage of left-handed people in America. By the way, our tendency to make conclusions from sample sizes which are too small to be reliably accurate is known almost jokingly as the law of small numbers, and that's actually discussed in Daniel Kahneman's book, Thinking Fast and Slow. I also made a video on the law of small numbers, which you should totally watch if you want to help me afford rent. Anyway, my guess for why this crowd averaging can be so accurate is just that it is similar, if not identical, to statistical sampling. In that once the amount of polled individuals reaches a certain size, the answer we get from that will be more and more representative of the truth. Now, even though James Sirowicki doesn't go into too much detail about why these group guesses can be accurate, he does go into detail about conditions that must be met in order for the guesses to be accurate. And I want to dive into specifically three conditions that I thought were most relevant. The first condition is that the questions asked have to be very specific types of questions. They have to be quantifiable, questions whose answers you can put into numbers, like the three questions I asked. An example of something that wouldn't follow that condition is if you asked everyone to draw a picture and then you combined all the pictures together. We're not going to get the next Mona Lisa or something like that. We can, however, quantify more types of problems than you might expect. In Sarah Wiki's book, for example, he tells a story about how a group's averaged guess was used to find a lost submarine. Groups of different people were asked where they thought the submarine would be, their guesses were all run through a formula called Bayes' theorem, and then they found a mathematical coordinate to represent the average of those guesses. Later on, the actual submarine was found just around 200 yards from the group's guess. Condition number two, the group has to be relatively diverse. Oh god, this is a long sentence, am I going to be able to memorize this? If you get people who all think and act similarly, then their average guess will be less likely to converge on an accurate answer because all of the guessers will be subject to the same type of biases and errors, so their guesses won't balance each other out. I wasn't reading from my phone. To use the example from before, it'd be like if we got a room together full of all right-handed people and said, hey, what percentage of y'all are lefties? And no one raises their hand, and so then we're like, all right, zero lefties in America, great, done. But of course that's not representative of the population we're trying to study, it needed to be more diverse than just right-handed people. Last condition, condition three. All of the guessers have to be acting totally independently from one another. 
If the individuals are hearing the guesses that others are making, then their guess is no longer fully their own. It's a group biased version of their own guess. And you may be thinking, oh, but I'm sure it's probably not that big an influence. Is it really that big a deal? Well, I wanna share with you two examples of how even small factors can greatly influence an individual's behavior. In Dan Ariely's book, we're hitting book number three now, Predictively Irrational, he talks about an experiment where patrons at a restaurant order beer by writing down their orders privately and giving them to the waiter or ordering out loud publicly like you typically would in a restaurant. What Ariely found is that when folks ordered their beers out loud, there was much greater variety than when they ordered them in private. Think about it, if someone ahead of you orders what you were already planning on order, you might change your order just for the sake of having more variety at the table. Whereas if you had just written your orders down and given them to the waiter, they would have brought back whatever you wanted without being influenced by the other, by your other table mates' guesses. Guesses, you know what I'm trying to say. As part of the experiment, Ariely also tracked the beer drinkers' enjoyment of their selections. And interestingly, those who ordered publicly had a lower average enjoyment than those who ordered privately. And this is probably because some of those who ordered publicly probably switched their orders for the sake of table variety, not their own personal enjoyment. Now you might be thinking, okay, that situation is interesting, but really it's only happening because you're trying to create variety with your friends when you're going out. It's not something that would actually come into play when you're trying to make an important decision in your real life, right? Well, to address that, we are headed back to book number two, Thinking Fast and Slow by Dan Kahneman. Kahneman wanted to show that something as seemingly insignificant as rolling dice could greatly impact incredibly important decisions. I'm actually just gonna read right from the book on this one. German judges with an average of more than 15 years of experience on the bench first read a description of a woman who had been caught shoplifting, then rolled a pair of dice that were loaded, so every roll resulted in either a three or a nine. As soon as the dice came to a stop, the judges were asked whether they would sentence the woman to a term in prison greater or lesser in months than the number showing on the dice. Finally, the judges were instructed to specify the exact prison sentence they would give to the shoplifter. On average, those who had rolled a nine said they would sentence her to eight months. Those who had rolled a three said they would sentence her to five months. If veteran judges' ability to impartially sentence criminals is impacted by the rolling of dice, then it is not surprising in the least that our ability to make guesses is influenced by the guesses of those around us that we hear. This is why it's such a big deal that one of the conditions for the accuracy of this crowd guessing is that everyone's guess remains their unbiased individual guess. Okay, so we understand this wisdom of crowds effect, we have a guess as to how it happens, and we understand the conditions that must be met in order for it to occur. The last thing I wanna say in this video is that ultimately, Surowiecki's ideas are theories, and they're not proven facts. It can be difficult to determine how accurate this crowd guessing will be, even when all the conditions I just listed are perfectly met. The Wikipedia page on this book does note that there are examples of crowd-based guessing being inaccurate, such as stock markets failing. To these examples, Surowiecki has stated that the members of the crowd were too conscious of the opinions of others and began to emulate each other and conform rather than think differently, thus violating condition three, unbiased individuality. But whether or not Surowiecki these theories are completely foolproof. I hope the examples in the book and the examples that I did with y'all have made it clear that this is at least a really, really interesting phenomenon. To summarize everything this video has gone over so far, James Surowiecki's book talks about the wisdom of crowds effect. The fact that averaged group guesses can, under the right conditions, be more accurate than even the guesses of the most intelligent individuals in the group. Though it's not perfectly clear why this exactly happens, it's probably because as you sample more and more data points, your answer will become closer to the truth. There are conditions that the group must meet in order for this guess to be accurate. The question must have a quantifiable answer, the group guessing has to be relatively diverse, and the group must be acting individually, unbiased by the other's thoughts and guesses. And yes, the system is not a perfect science, but when these conditions are met, we can often see and appreciate the wisdom of crowds. Ooh, that was fun. Uh, it's nice to be back. Thank you for watching this very much, I do appreciate it. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, there is another video I have uploaded today that has the data or another deeper analysis of the data that I was looking at before. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. It's in the cards, it'll be in the description. I'm sure if you really wanna watch it, you'll be able to find it. <laughs> Also, if you have not already, please subscribe to this channel and click on the little bell so that you'll get a notification when my next video comes out in 2021. Thank you and goodbye.